We camped at Deception Pass State Park the night before our first long day of riding. It's a pretty nice campground, clean bathrooms and token operated showers, and the campsites aren't too cramped. It was fairly quiet. We had a great view of the Pacific Ocean from West Beach. There was a beautiful sunset and the classic rear tire dip in the waves. After a pretty good sleep, we broke camp and headed west. This campground is along Cranberry Lake. Howdy. We had to climb a bit through lush forests to get to the highway and then across the iconic Deception Pass Bridge. We continued east on Highway 20. We had a pretty good shoulder and drivers gave us some good space. When it was available, we took advantage of bike paths. We rode through the south end of Anacortes and along the lowlands and crossed Interstate 5. We traveled through towns like Burlington, Sterling, and Cedro Woolley. There were a few overcast skies, but the temperatures were very pleasant. We headed east along the Skagit Valley on Highway 20. We found plenty of farmland and old barns. The Cascade Trail parallels Highway 20 and we tried to stay off the highway to avoid traffic. The Cascade Trail was mostly packed gravel. Problem was we sometimes ran into dead ends or impassable trail conditions so we had to backtrack.
We eventually had to stay on Highway 20, going through towns like Concrete, Rockport, and Marble Mount. The road was fairly bicycle friendly with a decent sized shoulder. One thing we did find was a lot of logging trucks. Most of them gave us plenty of room as they passed by. We stopped for lunch at an old truck scale, quiet place for a break. As we rode further into the wilderness, we had spectacular views of the vibrant turquoise water of the Skagit River. Beautiful, that <laughs> We climbed over 2,000 feet today and we entered the North Cascades National Park and soon found the New Halem Campground. This campground is the best one on our whole trip. It's clean, quiet, clean bathrooms and good campground spacing between campsites. The campground also has bear boxes and that was really handy for food and supply storage. I've had questions about my saddlebag setup on my Trek Checkpoint ALR5. I use an Axiom rack for disc brakes. It bolts right on. Then I use Axiom panniers that snap right on the rack and lock in securely. I put my tent, my Big Agnes Copper Spur HV UL2 lightweight tent, and Nemo Disco sleeping bag in dry bags and strap them on the rack with nylon straps. We awoke knowing that day two would be a big climbing day, but we didn't know anything about the challenges that lie ahead. Climbing started right as we left the campground. We climbed through some of the most gorgeous scenery of our whole trip today. We continued past the housing for Seattle City Lights. That's where workers manage and maintain several hydroelectric dams on the Skagit River. My rear 
rear light on? Is mine on? No. Highway 20 is also called the North Cascades Highway. The views are just glorious with snow and glacier topped peaks and turquoise waterways. There are numerous scenic vistas along our way. As we keep climbing, the traffic thinned out a bit. We stopped once to filter water for our bottles. There are a number of beautiful waterfalls along the way. Everything was going great when we had a potential disaster. We were climbing up the pass and Darian's rear derailleur cable snapped. He was stuck in his highest gear, making it impossible to climb. After a few minutes and various ideas, we tried a zip tie to hold the derailleur in a lower gear. This was low enough gearing to get us up the pass. You hear the rumble. What do you think about this adventure thus far? Awesome adventure. It's got some epics in it, but it's awesome. How's that uh, makeshift cable thing working? The MacGyver. <laughs> we broke our shifter cable. Paul's zip tie is working though. Three, third gear down. Hopefully get us to the top. The view from the Washington Pass overlook is amazing. That hairpin turn with the winding road, that's where we're headed. As we headed down the pass, we adjusted the derailleur repair for a little higher gearing.
We had a few miles to our stop for the night and we pulled into the town of Winthrop for a miracle, a welcome site, a full service bike shop. They took us right in and got the shifter cables fixed. It was a little more difficult than we expected, but we got it fixed up and headed to Paragon Lake State Park. Clean showers, clean bathrooms, and nice open campsites. My wife and friend brought the barbecue and made us a great hamburger dinner, a welcomed meal after a challenging day. We woke up this morning not knowing this would be our toughest day of the whole week. We descended into Winthrop, then headed south on the old Winthrop Twisp Highway with light traffic. We decided on an overland route to get to our next town. We expected a paved road, but there were other things in store. We climbed up a steep grade from the Metal Valley on Benson Creek Road, past hobby farms and into the woods, then the pavement stopped. The gravel road kept climbing and I thought it was a good idea we were both on gravel bikes. We got a little turned around but knew the general direction we needed to go so we pushed on as the road deteriorated. We finally got on a paved road and kept climbing. Then it turned to gravel again and included a race to avoid the chase of a barking pit bull. What goes up must come down and we finally descended down to the town of Brewster along the Columbia River. We stopped at Subway to rest and refuel. Then it was across the mighty Columbia River and along the shore for several miles to the town of Bridgeport.
It was uphill from there to climb out of the Columbia River Valley. Long, rolling roads were ahead today. Plenty of farmland and retired farm buildings. We're in between Bridgeport and Grant Coulee. Very quiet country road, a little bit of a headwind. And you can kind of see him off in the distance over there. I think they're called Chalk Hills. Just some unique features. White hills popping up out of the landscape. There was one flat tire for Darien along this stretch with a quick fix. We traveled along Highway 17 toward Leahy, then got on Highway 174 to Grand Coulee. This was our longest day in the saddle with eight and a half hours of ride time, over 6,000 feet climbing, and we weren't done yet. We knew it would be a long downhill to Grand Coulee, and we finally reached the descent. The first town is Grand Coulee, which was pretty quiet. Then we decided to go down to the town of Coulee Dam, even though it would be a good climb back up. On the way down, I heard a rhythmic hissing sound of a back flat tire. It took a little time, but we plugged the hole and got on to our dinner at a Mexican restaurant with a perfect view of the Grand Coulee Dam, a welcomed break. Of course, we had to climb after dinner to get to our campground, which was another descent to a crowded Spring Canyon campground. This was our least favorite camp spot with packed in campers, a so-so bathroom, no showers, and no power, but we were tired, so we put in our earplugs and had our best sleep of the week. Yeah. Come on, wait. 
It's the final day of our journey. We started with a climb back up out of the Columbia River Valley. You can hear the heavy breathing as we enter a big stretch of historic farmland. This is a special kind of beauty marked with windmills, rolling hills of grain, and patterns cut in the dirt. You'll find buildings that have been around for decades providing food for America and beyond. We're traveling through this area on Highway 2 with several small towns along the way like Wilbur, Creston, Reardon, and a lunch stop at Davenport. Along the way, I suffered another flat tire. Some kind of metal on the road made a good-sized gash. We had to change a plug three times to get it to seal. The last downhill of the day took us right into downtown Spokane and our finish line in Riverfront Park. A total of 352 miles, 18,884 feet of climbing, and 26 hours, 17 minutes, and 1 second in the saddle. It was an epic journey, always to be remembered. <laughs>